Hello, and welcome to Nostalgic Medicine, where we take a look at fascinating stories about the history of medicine and healthcare. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the history of electroconvulsive therapy. The history of treating mental illness has seen many rather strange treatments come and go, especially over the last 100 years. These include things like infecting people with malaria to treat syphilis, insulin coma therapy, and lobotomies. But one treatment from that era which has survived to this day that might surprise you if you're not familiar with the field of psychiatry is electroconvulsive therapy. A lot of people's first impression of electroconvulsive therapy is that it's an outdated, barbaric treatment and that's mainly due to the negative depictions that it's been given by the media, like in this scene from the hit Netflix show Stranger Things, which shows one of the characters being given it forcefully. But the reality is far from the truth, and it's actually a fairly safe, very tightly regulated, and very effective treatment for severe mental illnesses, and it's saved many lives over the past few decades. For example, the United Kingdom treat about 2,000 people with it every year. So something you might be wondering is how the hell did we even get the idea to treat mental disorders by giving people seizures in the first place? Well that is exactly what I'm going to talk about in this video as we go through the rise of electroconvulsive therapy in the 1930s and 40s followed by its decline about 20 years after this and finally its recent re-emergence. Electroconvulsive therapy is exactly what it says in the tin. It's a method of treating mental illnesses like severe depression and catatonic schizophrenia when all other options have failed and we do this by giving a patient seizures. The roots of this treatment can be traced all the way back to 1780 when experiments were done by an Italian doctor Luigi Galvani in which he discovered that the muscles of a dead frog's leg twitched after striking it with an electrical spark, which was basically a mini seizure, as you can see from this modern demonstration of it. This is what first made people realise that the human body is electrically active, and that this electrical activity may one day be used as a treatment for a disease. But the advancement of medical knowledge was pretty slow back then as you might expect so it would be a whole 150 years after this that seizures were first used to treat mental disorders. And this was thanks to a Hungarian neuropsychiatrist called Ladislas Maduna, after he made a very interesting series of observations. He found that epileptics had a much lower rate of schizophrenia when compared to the general population, and also the opposite finding, that schizophrenics had a much lower rate of epilepsy than the average. So he therefore speculated that schizophrenia and epilepsy were diseases that were two ends of the spectrum, or antagonistic to each other. Medina provided further evidence to back up his theory by looking at the brain cells of both of these groups of patients, where he found that epileptics had an increased number of glial cells, which are the connective tissue cells in the brain, where schizophrenics had a reduced number of these cells. And you should all know what you need to do next after making a hypothesis like this. You need to test this out on humans. And that's what Meduna did do between 1934 and 1935 using a substance called camphor, which can cause seizures in very high doses. He gave a few courses of camphor injections to 26 patients who had a range of severe chronic mental illnesses such as mutism, refusal to eat and apathy. The treatment looked very brutal unsurprisingly, but he found that 10 of these patients had a complete recovery of their mental state. Medina would later replace camphor with another injectable agent that was more effective at inducing seizures called metrazole and this method would go on to become popular around Europe and America during the early 30s and 40s. 
Just to clarify, this was an electroconvulsive therapy, but simply just convulsive therapy, as it was a chemical agent and not electricity that was producing these seizures. So even though it quickly became a very popular treatment for a wide range of mental disorders, it did have a few downsides. The main downside was that it often took a very long time for the patients to start seizing, sometimes as long as 90 minutes. And this would give the patients severe anxiety and panic in the period that they were waiting for this to happen. And the panic was often so bad that the nurses and doctors had to chase patients around the room to keep them calm. So it was a pretty effective treatment. And this was in a time before antidepressants and antipsychotics, when there was literally nothing else for patients with severe mental illness. But doctors knew that they needed a much more efficient way to induce the seizures. And this would be thankfully discovered by an Italian neurologist called Ugo Saletti, who is now considered the father of electroconvulsive therapy. Saletti was very aware of the pros and cons of metrazole shock therapy, so he would get the idea of using electricity to induce seizures after visiting a butcher shop. This will horrify the vegans and vegetarians among you to hear about, but Saletti saw the way that pigs would be given an electric shock with the form of stun gun and would start seizing instantaneously, which would render them unconscious and easy to kill. There are videos of this on YouTube if you want to watch it, but it's pretty gruesome, so I'm not going to include any clips of them in this video. Anyways, this observation led Ugo Saletti to work with his assistant Lucio Bini, and they were going to invent a machine that could induce seizures in humans in 1938. They did first test the machine on dogs, which actually killed many of them due to cardiac arrest as the electrodes of the machine were applied to places like the mouth and anus, so no shortage of animal cruelty in Saletti's research. But they eventually found out that the best method was applying the shock to the head, and when the machine was first tried out on humans with mental illnesses, he found that it had the same effects as those reported with metrazole, but it had the upside of being able to reliably induce seizures instantaneously. This video is an example of a woman in 1943 who appears very disorganised and psychotic. Was given a course of electroconvulsive therapy as seen here. And then made what appears to be a complete recovery. So electroconvulsive therapy would completely replace metrazole therapy in mental institutions around the world. And the technique used by Saletti has largely remained the same up to this day with some minor changes. The most important change happened in the 1940s with the introduction of muscle relaxants such as Courer which made the seizures less violent and less likely to cause bone fractures. You can clearly see the difference in these videos which shows seizures with and without muscle relaxants. Eventually, the common practice would be to make patients completely unconscious using anaesthetic drugs that put you to sleep before the seizure, and this would make electroconvulsive therapy a much less frightening experience. But the golden age of electroconvulsive therapy would soon be over thanks to the invention of antidepressant and antipsychotic medications, but most importantly due to the rise of a widespread antipsychiatry movement in places like the USA, which could make a whole other video of its own. <laughs>
The leaders of this anti-psychiatry movement would declare that treatments like electroconvulsive therapy were inhumane and basically amounted to medically approved torture. And it did help that before then, electroconvulsive therapy was used as a kind of cure-all and some doctors even used it to treat things like homosexuality, which it certainly didn't help for. And this negative sentiment would spread to the general public, thanks to extremely negative depictions of this practice in the media. One very famous example can be found in the very famous 1975 film One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, where the main character is forcibly given electroconvulsive therapy as a punishment for trying to escape a mental hospital. While this use of threatening and disciplining patients with electroconvulsive therapy definitely was a thing, it doesn't change the fact that it was an effective treatment which changed the lives of many patients. And it's honestly a shame that a misinformed media led to the widespread decline in the treatment between the 60s and the 80s. But like every medical treatment that has been demonstrated to work, electroconvulsive therapy would ultimately pull through to survive this backlash and has since made a resurgence. And this is mainly because several national and international psychiatric organisations put their heads together in the 90s and based on over 50 years of knowledge, created in-depth guidelines about the use of electroconvulsive therapy with a view to make the treatment as safe, effective and as tolerable to the patient as possible. These include recommendations about things like the intensity of the shock delivered, the duration of the shock, the placement of the electrodes around the body, the close monitoring of possible side effects, especially amnesia and cognition, and most importantly, the legal part, including the requirement of the patient's consent in most cases, which is quite a unique thing for mental health treatment as most medications in psychiatry can actually be given against the patient's wishes. So I hope this brief look at ECT's history has shown you that it definitely is here to stay. Even though we now know that the original belief of epilepsy and schizophrenia being antagonistic is probably incorrect, it was this mistake that led to the development of this controversial, yet at the same time life-changing treatment for many. So what does the future of electroconvulsive therapy bring? Well, despite the fact that ECT is generally only considered a last-line treatment when other things like medications have failed, the success of ECT has inspired the development of other forms of brain stimulation, such as transcranial magnetic stimulation, the patient remains fully awake during this, there are no seizures and less side effects. So maybe as therapies like these become optimised to become as effective as possible in treating mental illnesses, it might not be unusual for it to be used instead of medications. <laughs>